This is the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And as someone who's been using the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro since it was released, I was super excited because we finally have a real MacBook Pro. You see, the 13 inch wasn't really a MacBook Pro. It was kind of like a MacBook Pro Lite. And with this new model, Apple took a lot of the things that frustrated me about the 13 inch MacBook Pro and fixed them. So let's put these two head to head see if the 14 inch is worth the extra money. We'll talk about whether you should upgrade if you already have the 13. And then we also need to talk about this whole notch situation. So when we look at the form factor of the 14 versus the 13, there's a lot to talk about because as similar as they appear on paper, they don't actually feel the same. So first of all, the 14 inch is about a third of an inch or 0.8 centimeters wider and deeper. It also weighs about a half a pound or 0.2 kilograms more. And this may not sound like a lot, but it's definitely noticeable. The two are listed at the same height when closed, but the 13 inch MacBook has more of a tapered design, so it gets a lot thinner as you get to the edges. And the 14 inch definitely has a boxier look. Now, if you haven't had a chance to lift both of them, it may be hard to visualize how different they are, but I'm telling you the second that you pick them up, you immediately recognize that the 14 inch MacBook Pro is a better built laptop. So if you're prioritizing portability, the 13 inch is smaller and lighter, but if you're looking for more of that solid pro feel, that would be the 14 inch. Now, in addition to the more substantial feel, one of the obvious advantages of the 14 inch is the display. But it's not just bigger, it's actually better in meaningful ways. So first of all, we're getting a 14.2 inch display versus a 13.3 inch display, which may not sound like a big difference, but it's actually noticeable. If we look at the bottom of the display, they start at about the same height. The base plate on the 14 is a little bit higher, but I'll go ahead and call it even. But as we look at the top, you can see that it's significantly taller. The same is true for the width. So when you have them side by side, the 14 inch laptop itself doesn't seem like it's a lot bigger, but the display does. And don't worry about it, we'll get back to this notch. The type of display is also different. So on the 13 inch, we're getting a retina display, which is an IPS LED display. On the 14 inch, we're getting a mini LED liquid retina XDR display, which is the same type of display that we got on a 12.9 inch M1 iPad Pro. And it's one of the best displays that I've ever seen on a laptop. Now both are P3 displays, but the 14 inch has a higher resolution at 3024 by 1964 versus 2560 by 1600. It has a higher pixel per inch count at 254 versus 227, a higher maximum brightness at 1000 versus 500, and it even has a peak brightness of 1600 for HDR content. What this means to you in real life is that the image is going to be brighter, it's going to be sharper, we're going to get better dynamic range so there's more detail in the highlights and the shadows, and then on top of that, it's a ProMotion display. Now ProMotion is Apple's adaptive refresh rate, and it has several advantages. So first of all, if we're looking at static content, it's able to drop the refresh rate down to 24 frames per second and then conserve battery life. Now you're not gonna notice this because nothing is actually moving on the display. Now then if you're scrolling or you're moving windows around or you're watching content or playing games, then it can bump the refresh rate all the way up to 120 hertz, which creates a very smooth and fluid user experience. Now in contrast, the 13 inch MacBook Pro is locked at 60 hertz, regardless of what you're doing. Now the best part of ProMotion is that it's not just switching between these two extremes. It's able to identify what type of content is being viewed and then choose the right frame rate in that range to create a good viewing experience while maximizing battery life. So I think we could all agree that the 14 inch truly has a top notch display. Sorry, had to do it. The next major advantage of the 14 inch MacBook Pro is the ports. And this was one of my biggest problems with the 13 inch MacBook Pro because all we got was two Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. If you needed HDMI, you had to get an adapter or a USB-C to HDMI cable. If you needed to use SD cards, you had to get a card reader or a hub. And there were simply not enough ports for a Pro device. And the 14 inch MacBook Pro takes care of all of my issues. So first of all, there's an HDMI port on the right. So if I needed to quickly connect it to a TV or a projector, it's always available. Now it's an HDMI 2.0, not 2.1, and I know some people were complaining about that, but for how I use this port in real life, it's just simply not an issue. 
Like I don't need 4K 120 or 144 for the types of things that I do. Next on the right side, we have an SD card reader. So I can just take the card out of my camera, pop it in and I'm good to go. I don't have to worry about bringing a card reader with me. Now moving on, we now have three Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on the right and two on the left, which solves a couple of problems for me. So first we're getting more ports. And second, we have ports on both sides. So we can attach accessories or charge the 14 inch MacBook Pro from both sides. And speaking of charging, we're getting MagSafe 3, which gives us the security of an accidental sudden pull on the cord. It offers really fast charging and it means that we can charge the MacBook without having to use any of the other ports, which is not something that I could do on the 13 inch. Now the eight core CPU version of the 14 inch MacBook Pro comes with a 67 watt USB-C adapter. And then the 10 core CPU versions come with a 96 watt power adapter. And if you want the more powerful adapter on the base model, you can upgrade for 20 bucks. Now back to the ports, these more powerful Thunderbolt 4 ports allow us to connect more external displays. So if you're getting the M1 Pro chip, you can attach two 60 Hertz 6K external displays. If you upgrade to the M1 Max, you could connect three 60 Hertz 6K external displays and one 60 Hertz 4K display. The 13 inch MacBook Pro only supports one 60 Hertz 6K display. Now looking at the rest of the body and starting with the keyboards, there are some similarities and some important differences. So on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the well is black anodized aluminum, which I think looks sweet. The keys themselves are the same size and have the same feel to them. So the typing experience is identical until we get to the top row. On the 13 inch MacBook Pro, we have a small escape key, a touch bar, and then a small touch ID button. On the 14 inch MacBook Pro, we have a row of full sized keys, including display brightness, exposed view, spotlight search, a dictation key, do not disturb, multimedia controls, and volume controls. And then there's a larger touch ID button with a tactile ring that guides your finger for faster and more accurate authentication. Personally, I like the touch bar, but I know that a lot of you didn't and you're super happy that we now have actual buttons. So I'm happy for you. Now my Apple also upgraded the camera and speaker system. The new camera on the 14 inch is 1080p instead of 720p on the 13 inch. It's also better in low light so the image is less grainy and I would say that it's definitely at least one notch above the rest of Apple's laptop cameras. And here's a sample from the camera and microphone. Here's a camera and microphone sample from the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the 14 inch MacBook Pro this should give you a pretty good idea of what you should expect from these laptops if you plan on using them for video calls. The speakers, again, are an improvement, which is always welcomed. The speakers on the 13 inch MacBook Pro were probably the best speakers on any laptop that I own. So it wasn't something that was exactly on my wish list, but it's great to see that Apple continues to push forward. If you plan on watching content, listening to music, or using these for video calls, both are going to sound fantastic, but if you listen to them side by side, the 14 will absolutely sound fuller and richer. So if speakers are a priority for you, go with the 14. At the same time, we know that the goal of these laptops isn't just content consumption, right? Because otherwise you can just pick up an M1 MacBook Air and you'll be all set. And that was one of my other main issues with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. It was only incrementally more powerful than the MacBook Air. But to set the stage for these results, both laptops have 16 gigs of unified memory, the 13 inch MacBook Pro has the M1 chip, and the 14 inch has the base M1 Pro chip. Both have an eight core CPU, but the M1 has four high performance cores and four high efficiency cores, and the base M1 Pro has six high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. So clearly Apple is prioritizing performance, and of course you can upgrade the M1 Pro to a 10 core CPU. And if you do that, you'll get two additional high performance cores. For single core performance, the M1 scored 1749 versus 1753 on the M1 Pro. And for multi-core performance, we got 7667 versus 9914. So about a 29% improvement on the M1 Pro. I also ran Cinebench R23 because I wanted to test sustained performance on the M1 Pro. And even after 30 minutes of running at 100%, 
it wasn't getting throttled back. Now the fans did kick on to help keep the system running cool. They stayed at around or under 3000 RPM and they were very quiet. When we look at GPU performance, the M1 comes with an eight core GPU and this M1 Pro comes with a 14 core GPU. You can upgrade it to a 16 core GPU or if you want even more than that, you can get the M1 Max with a maximum of 32 cores. And by the way, my maxed out M1 Max MacBook Pro should be arriving any day, so there's more testing to do. Now looking at the Geekbench Compute Benchmark, the M1 Pro absolutely crushed the M1. So when it comes to performance, there's no question that even the base M1 Pro is a major upgrade over the M1, and I'm super excited to see what the M1 Max can do. One area where the M1 comes out ahead is battery life. So the 13 inch MacBook Pro is rated for 20 hours versus 17 on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. Both are absolutely outstanding and clearly Apple is prioritizing performance on this more powerful chip. At the same time, I love the fact that 17 hours is the lower of the two when it comes to battery life because it shows you just how incredibly efficient these chips are. I'm also working on some more detailed battery comparisons and I'll include those in follow up videos. Now I wanna talk about the notch then whether it's worth Worth getting the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro over the 13 inch and whether it's worth upgrading if you already own the 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro. So starting with the notch, I get why people are bothered by it. And if you ask me if I'd rather have it gone, I would say that depends on what I have to give up because after using the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I don't really notice it anymore unless I actually look for it. It's in an area of the screen that's mostly wasted by the menu bar. And if having it means that I can have a larger display with a smaller form factor, then I'll take it. I'm not sure why the notch had to be this big since we don't have all the components for Face ID, but ultimately I don't want a worse camera. I don't want larger bezels. So for how I use this laptop, the notch isn't really an issue. Now the price difference is a little deceiving because the base model 13 inch M1 MacBook Pro costs $12.99 and the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro is $19.99. So we're looking at an extra 700 bucks and I'm using the prices on the Apple store because they're standardized, but you can get better prices using the links in the description. So 700 bucks sounds like a lot, but when you look a little closer, then things immediately change because the 14 inch M1 Pro base model comes with 16 gigs of unified memory and 512 gigs of internal SSD storage. So in order to match that configuration on the 13 inch MacBook Pro, you have to add an additional 400 bucks, which now brings the difference down to $300. To me, this is a no brainer. You're getting a larger and better display, a ton of extra ports, better external display support, a better camera, better speakers, more processing power, a more powerful GPU, and the one thing you're giving up on is battery life. So if you ask me, I'm taking the 14 inch. If you already have the 13 inch MacBook Pro, then I would ask you, are you happy with the performance? Are there enough ports for what you need? Is the display as good as you need it to be? If the answer is yes, then you're all set. And if you want more, then I would look at what you can get for your M1 MacBook Pro and then upgrade. Now that you watch this comparison, you should watch this video right here. Hopefully this video was helpful. Click on my face to subscribe. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.